Hello, 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 everyone. We're so excited to have you back for our finale episode of High Life Music Deconstructed. It's really been a ride, and we're looking forward to sharing some more musical excitements with our host, Bernard. My name is Abna Sewa, and I'm the founder of the digital culture publication, Akadi Magazine, for Ghanaians in the diaspora and also in um, the motherland. And I'm joined by Bernard Johnson Taki, who is a vinyl record collector. He's also known by the name Volta 45. And he's an archivist and cultural activist who also runs the initiative, The Golden Stool Project. So welcome, Bernard. Hello, it's, it's actually, it's good to be back again. It's been a long, I don't know how long, but we finally managed to get episode four together. So yes we're looking forward to it yeah and you you basically schooled us on um the history of high life which i think has spanned almost a century so you know i'm really looking forward to hearing what you've got in store for us but just to recap for our viewers we've basically been talking about traditional music we've evolved on to speaking about palm wine music and also the influence of american jazz and then when we got to the point where we had the coup in Ghana, we saw that the, the music changed. And out of that, we had um, Bogger High Life. So yeah. for those of you who've missed any of that, we have it all on video. We, all, we have it on Bernard's YouTube page, which is the Golden Stool Project. It's also on Acadia as well on Facebook. So you can recap at your leisure. Um, but while we, um, you, we just wait, um, I know that people are tweeting so I just want to make sure that they're aware that it's HMD series if they want to retweet or to just ask us any questions um, and I think it's time for you to tell us a little bit more about what you'll be sharing with us today for episode five. Yes so it's, it's I mean you've you've actually encapsulated all that we we spoke about from episodes one to episode five Sorry to episode four, beg your pardon. Um, mm. So on episode five, we will briefly be touching on hip life. Um, that was obviously the genre that emerged after the demise of, of Boga High Life and the subsequent music trends that followed. I mean, by the turn of the millennium, um, most young musicians gravitated towards um, performing with a backing track or, 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 or miming instead of a live band. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is more or less the case today. I mean, in Ghana, the chat toppers, the superstars of, of today, they hardly, they hardly play live. But, I mean, on this episode, we will be shining the spotlight on this generation of very young, talented musicians who are still playing live. I mean, we know high life is sort of our national sound, but it, it's, it's not only high life. You know, we've, we've got music from the North as well, and we've got all types of Sort of contemporary indigenous music. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, um, you wouldn't find these um, young new musicians playing in like the trendiest clubs in Accra or something like that. Instead, you, you find them playing to global audiences from, especially in Europe, from mm -hmm. Roskilde Festival, the North Sea Jazz Festival, our own Glastonbury and Womad here in the UK. Um, South Sisa, Busara, <clears throat> in Zanzibar, I mean, just to name a few of these festivals. And these virtually, I'd say, unknown acts in Ghana play to thousands. So on this yeah. very episode, um, we're very lucky to have a few of these talented musicians to actually, they, we actually had a word and they'll be playing for us. So we've got um, Kwame Yaboa, a multi-instrumentalist producer. We've got Chichiku from the Super Opong Stars amazing guitarist. Um, we've got Nyono Wofio Agoso from the Agoso band, um, great neo-traditional sound. And then finally, we have um, Lala Sessions. So Lala Sessions is more or less a, a, a hip new collective in Ghana um, formed by um, Neem Manche and, and Biko. I mean, you're going to get to meet these guys later. And, and they're, they're amazing people, actually. I can't wait to hear um, their performances, hear the conversations you've had with us, with them. Yep. So I think the best thing to do is for us to get started because yep. we've got a lot to get through. Normally, um, you always start us off with a song. So what do you have for us today? 
Okay, we what I have for you today, I mean, today we are going to talk about hip life. So we know hip life started in the mid 90s. I mean, rapping in chi or rapping in a, in, in a Ghanaian dialect started in, in the mid 90s. But I'm going to take you 10 years back when Ghanaians were rapping in English, you know. So mm -hmm. for this um, music break session, I have a band called Pepper, Onion, Ginger and Salt. It was led by um, Bessa Simmons, famous keyboard player in Ghana. Um, it had the Hammond brothers, um, Max Hammond and um, Louis ha Max Hammond on drums and Louis Hammond on trumpet. And they call this MC Mambo. So yes, let's go for it. Oh, yeah, it's coming. <laughs> Thank you. 
What a great start to our episode. I really enjoyed that. You can hear the brassy sounds. It's got a jazzy feel to it as well. Um, and a bit of a rap. So tell, tell us, why did you pick this song? Well, I mean, today we're going to talk briefly about hip life. So I thought, OK, hip life is rap. And um, hip life actually was the time when Ghanaian musicians started rapping in Chi. So I thought, OK, Let's go back 80s, early rap. And I picked the name of this band actually is called Pepper Onion and Pepper Onion, Ginger and Salt. No joke. It's an awesome name. <laughs> You're not gonna forget yeah. that one. No, no. So that was just to sort of um just um show that. I mean, Ghanaians had always loved rapping to some extent. The the tongue twisting and alliteration has always been sort of part of, of our DNA. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it really shines through. Now, yeah. as with tradition, you always explain to us what you're going to speak about. You break it down for us. So can you do that for us today? Well, so, I mean, for this final finale, instead of having eight odd bits, I've got it in two sort of really simple sections. So yeah. we're going to talk briefly about the era um, after, after the era of Boga High Life. And we'll touch briefly on hip life and the subsequent journeys that followed it sort of lots of the, the, the lots of um offshoots of 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 contemporary music around that time and then the final bit which is like very most exciting um are the performances <laughs> and performances and interviews so yes that is that that's that's the way we're going to roll for this final episode okay so you have mentioned the acts that will be performing so i guess we yeah. should just get ready and get get started get stuck into it Yes, but yeah, let's let's talk about hip life and the subsequent journeys first. I know you're you're you're, you're sort of excited, and then we can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let well let's start with high life. Tell us what it is. Like break no, it down for us. Hip life, not high life. Sorry, sorry, I keep <laughs> doing that. Hip life, yeah, break okay. it down for us. <laughs> so I mean, hip life is another um, subsequent journey of 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 Ghanaian music that became really popular. Um, in the in the mid '90s, it was basically a fusion of U.S. hip hop, um, U.S. hip hop culture, high life music, and Ghanaian sort of proverbial speech and 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 and, and storytelling. Yeah, yes. I, yes. I mean, it reminds me when I think about it of episode one when we had the Achami Appalachians, mm -hmm. and yeah. then also episode three when we had uh, Jedu Ambele. With, with the early form of rap that we heard then. Yes. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, could you explain to me, us, uh, sorry. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, hip life, I mean, borrows a lot from from the rhythmic re repertoire of, of traditional music, um, um, praise poetry, war songs, and sort of Ghanaian rhythms and traditional oratory um, circles. Um, mm -hmm. So alliteration and tongue twisting has always been um, part of our Ghanaian culture. Um, going back again to episode one, where we looked at Ochami Ekufu's um, funeral dirge for 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 the Asante Hine um, yeah. when he died, it was it was structured in bars, and to me that is all part and part of our tradition. I mean, this has been going on. Um, um, ever since wordplay has been going on ever since the beginning of time. And you find it most in the royal courts or in probably traditional religion as well. So why is it that if we had sm smatterings of rap earlier on, why did it take hold in the 90s? Why did well, it take I that think, long? 
I think once again, I will backtrack again because this is more or less a summary of what we've been talking about for the past two months or so. Um, if you look at if you look at the trend of of sort of contemporary music and its offshoots, it always points to America, unfortunately. Mm. It, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> I think in the early forties and the fifties, it was big band. It was big band jazz. In the in the in the early seventies, it was American funk. You know, come the nineties, I mean, what was what was hip in America was hip hop. Yeah. You know, in the nineties, hip the hip hop industry had actually matured. So that was one aspect as to why if it took a strong hold. And then the next and I think most crucial point is that I mean hip hop epitomizes the, the twofold notion of um black masculinity, empowerment and capital success. So I've got loads of money. Yes, why not? I drive a, a, a Rolls Royce and I show it off. I have videos with scantily dressed women. And so it was a mirror image <laughs> of, 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 of what was happening in America, just to actually summarise it. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right there. And we see lots of trends of that still today. So yes. who were the pioneers of hip life? Um, I think pioneers of hip life. I would probably go back a bit more because from the record that I just played, we've been rapping, but we've always rapped in English. Yeah. You know, trying to copy the Americans like for like. Um, but it got to a point where there had to be some form of diversion. So people started rapping in the local dialects. Mm. Is that chi, I guess? Um, it could be chi, it could be ga, it could be ever. I mean, it, it was people started rapping now in local dialects now. And I think they did that mainly um, to get the message across because loads of, a lot of people would understand their local dialect. Mm. Um, um, they wanted to increase their fan base. So they thought, yeah, let's, let's try and, 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 and try and make it our own way. Let's try and make it our own way by mm. rapping in our local dialects, yeah. So who was, you? would you say, was the pioneer of doing that? Ah, back to that. So I can say um, the very first person to ever record a hip life or hip life song to, to vinyl was Reggie Rockstone. Reggie Rockstone um, was the son of um, famous designer Ricky Osei, born in London, but grew up in New York. Okay. Um, it was in 1996 that he teamed up with with Zap Mallet, another famous producer, and his other friend from New York called Rap Bakary. He was a producer. So this was the sort of the technical team behind him. And they released um, um, Choboy in 96, and it was a hit. I mean, it sampled yeah. K from Pong and, and, and Fela Kuti. So once again, that hip hop culture of sampling. Yeah. You know, that was clearly reflected in my opinion, Ghana's first ever hip life record. Absolutely. I'm sure you've got that record in um, your collection. Yes. I, I have that record. I actually bought it not long ago. It cost me a lot of money, but yeah. Okay, we it's won't special. discuss how much, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I guess that would have opened the doors for other artists to also start performing um, and singing in their national languages. Exactly. I mean, after Reggie's release, there was, they opened the floodgates. So you had people like Lord Kenya, um, the first rap group, the Talking Drums, Atumpam. Um, mm. You have Chief G, Native, um, Native Funk Lords with Eddie Blair. I remember that very well. Um, you had people like Tiny. I mean, the list, the list is is massive. It goes on. VIP or Bo. Book back your favorite your, your favorite group. Actually. Oh oh oh! You mentioned them. <laughs> I didn't think you were. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because um, I mean, tell us no, the no, story. I... <laughs> they came round to your house and what happened? Oh uh, oh! Don't don't make it like I always want to go on about it. But yes, I do. Basically, um, many years ago, although I'm not that old, they came to my house quite randomly because. Can you believe this, Bernard? Ages ago, I wanted to write an article about the evolution of high life music, and here we are today. So they came round to my house and they performed Chingilingi 
for me oh, in my house. Fantastic. So I mean, yeah, that that's my little claim to fame. There you go then. So <laughs> um, Tic Tac, Yogi Doggy, Sakodia, Bat, um, Samini Batman, that was it. And that was a pivotal moment in sort of um, Ghanaian contemporary music. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've talked, or you mentioned earlier about hyper masculinity um, being quite prominent when you talk about rap and hip life. And I'm interested to know if that made it harder for women to contribute. Well, it did, but I mean, you had women eventually break through. We'll take an example of Abrewanana, who was um, actually spotted by um, Bandex, Alaji Banda of Bandex. And she was in a group called Sasquad from, I think, from Takoradi or something like that. And they never made it until Bandex gave them that break. So mm. I think women in hip life also played a very sort of important role. You had people like Tiffany and Easy. I mean, those people laid the foundation for people like Eno Baroni and Sister Efia and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think, yes, hyper-masculinity, but yes, women also um, contributed immensely to that movement. Yeah. And I know that in previous episodes, we've always talked about the structures and the labels. Um, and we had a situation when we look back to the early 1900s. So I think the 1920s, um, yeah. a lot of the production was in uh, European hands and you saw that slowly shift so it's interesting to find out where we were in the 90s when it comes to industry structures. I think in the 90s it, 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 hip life gave birth to a number a, a very vibrant cottage industry of of labels, producers, recorded engineers, I mean marketing and distribution, a and R, you know yeah. so you had labels like Case Frequency um, you had Casa Records, you had Noise Records that released, um, what do you call it, Obrafo's Payamuka, which is is regarded by people in the hip life circles as the holy grail of of of, of, of hip life. Um, I've got had, that album. Fantastic. I mean, you had producers like, um, obviously, Zap Mallet, you had Rob Bakery, uh, you had JQ, who um, popularized the pan logo style of, 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 of rap music. Um, and then you had people like um, 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 Abraham Mohenijan as well. His contribution cannot be can, can, cannot be overlooked. So um, mm. Angie Anoff from um, Pigeon Music, you know, all these people did so much for the scene. They did they did so so much to to help artists develop their craft. And I know that when we've spoken before, we've. Um highlighted that you might have a, a trending type of music but you always have other types that are also playing so I know high life hadn't died I mean it hadn't gone away so what was happening there well so I mean just like in previous episodes as well I mean there were people that still carried on playing high life the way it should be played you know mm -hmm. they had I you know Western influence, so it was still like the Yam Ponsa guitar. They still more and most importantly, um they 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 played live. Um anyway, come the 90s, in terms of production, um, it had become more digitized. But although it had been digitized, people were still playing the Yam Ponsa style, the chord progressions were still the same chord progressions that was used in the 60s. Maybe horns were replaced by synthesizers, but that chord groove of high life still still maintained itself so you yeah. had singers you had you had singers like um papa she or bibini techi that um 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 terry terry bon Bonchaka. Terry, terry bon you know uh, um all those all, all those singers and kk fosu uh, and and all those singers they were most importantly i mean i can't forget dasi bren and anja bren that's the brand and Jamana, I think. Mm, yeah. 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 I mean, he released um, what's the name of that song? Um Ko -ko -ko. Ko -ko -ko with with Lord Which Kenya. I have. <laughs> with I think it was it was Lord Kenya doing the rap. So that was again was a mirror image of, of an American sort of style of putting yeah. musicians together. Typical Absolutely. example, I say Brian Mike Knight and Maze, if if yeah. you would be mine. Yeah. Typical no, R&B, yeah. soul, and hip hop. So this is a typical high life singer and a hip life 
artist. So I think that song in itself, that was produced by Marco Crippumante from Slip Music. I think it still stands and holds its own up to today. And what I find interesting is, I'm not sure if you mentioned Sarkodia, but you see him, he's kind of evolved you know, from that period in the early noughties right through to today, where he was, you know, he's been rapping, doing lots of high hip life music, but then we've seen that evolve into Afro beats and, you know, continued on. So, yeah. I mean, what could, could you talk about this seemingly acceleration of the shifts in music? That's what I'm going to call it. Yeah, I think come the 90s, the, 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 the creation and the onslaught of new journeys were like lightning fast. I mean, this was mainly propelled by, I'd say, technology to begin with because it was easier to, to make music. Come maybe the early 2000s, mid 2000s, there was an the internet. So that mm -hmm. even made it even much quicker to get music produced, marketing and, and, and sort of distributed. So you've got, as you said, Af the hip life, era went into something along the lines of Azonto, then Afrobeat, then um, um, what else have we got? Well, we've got kind of like drill now, don't we? Like, we've got the exactly. Comerica, yeah. The, the Comerica movement, as, yeah. as, as, as as you said. And so it's, it's I can't keep up, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, just, I just can't keep up. But I mean, that tells you that with the inception of technology now, we live in an era of instant gratification. It, mm. know, it's about having a hit for two hours and th th that's it. <laughs> I mean, we you actually know? should talk also about Caribbean music, which has been a feature all throughout High, um, high Life Music Deconstructed, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it has. And Caribbean music, i.e. dancehall, is yeah. number one in Ghana now. I mean, the top artist, the top two artists in Ghana, I think is Shatawali and Stoneboy. I mean, yeah. They rule the roost and they're doing dancehall, you know, which is a, a Caribbean phenomena. And the Caribbean phenomena has been with us since the 40s. The visit of Lord Kitchener, you know, mm -hmm. high life bands obsession with, with the Calypso. In the 60s, it was like rock steady. Everybody was playing rock steady. Pat Thomas played rock steady. African Brothers played rock steady. You know, and now it's it's dancehall. So I think Caribbean music is here to stay. It's not going to go anywhere. Absolutely, personally. yeah. Personally, personally, yeah. No, absolutely. You're absolutely right there. Yeah. I think one of the things that you've always sort of talked about ever since we started this episode, though, and it's a bit of a shift away from the popular music that we know in Ghana, is this focus on live playing live. Yes. So I want you to explain why that is still so important, you think? Yes, I think playing live music is is, is very, very important, you know. Um, although after the 80s, there was the downturn. As I said, there are young musicians still flying the flag and wanting to keep it going. I mean, live music in itself, um, watching a live performance, um, it's thought provoking, you know, it can let you understand the artist better, you know, it can let you relate to, to the artist's craft on a personal level. That's the first mm. one. And the second most important thing is that it encourages creativity. You know, watching the artist alone um, gives the artist, there's that communication between you watching the artist and you share that communication. You don't get that when the music is sort of, um, um, when a musician is playing to a backing track or, or a musician is, is miming. You, you just mm. don't have that. So no. that is one thing that makes live music important. And finally, live performances can help preserve your, your cultural heritage. Yeah. You know? At the same time as well, it can let people appreciate your cultural heritage. So I think it's uh, live music is, 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 is a it's it's a currency, you know. It's 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 a currency. No, you're absolutely the right there, and I feel like this is a nice segue into the first of many performances that we're going to see from yes. some of the contemporary high life musicians that you've yeah. been speaking to. Um, yes. So I I I think I'll start off with Lala sessions, which are Manche Ni Manche 
and also Biko. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit. I know you know him, but this is for the purposes of the audience. Um, so some of you may know or have watched Shirley Frimpong Manso's film Potato Potato, or you may have seen A Perfect Picture, the second one, 10 years later. If you have, you no doubt have heard um, of some of Biko's music because his soundtrack, some of his music is in the soundtrack. He describes himself as an Afro soul singer, and he also is a vocalist and a guitarist, and he's carved a name for himself in Ghana, performing across Accra, also outside in Switzerland, and also in the US as well. He's worked with producers, including the famous Kwame Yaboa, um, Kojo Entry, and also Kobi Onyami. And as we mentioned earlier, he is one part of the La La Sessions, which is a platform to preserve and promote Ghana's original sound and promote it to a younger audience. So, Bernard, I believe that you're going to talk about your mate, Ni Manche, as well, aren't yes. you? Yes, yes. So, um, Manche is an amazing bass player. Um, probably one of the best play bass players in Accra at the moment. Um, he comes from a, a very musical family and he started playing the bass in church, actually. Um, and he sat in the same class with Biko as well. Um, he's played for, you name it, um, Kojo Entry. He is currently on tour with the uh, um, Pat Thomas's Kwashibu area band. And he's also a producer. I mean, I just let the music do the talking. So okay. um, this is this is um, Lala Sessions. They have actually done a brilliant cover of um, Uhuru Professional Band's Booby. I mean, I was blown away the first time I heard this rendition anyway. So this is Lala with Booby.
So I tell my girl, say, me the ammo go day. When she tell, see her, she dey show me love every day. Coca, Coca, me do it on the side. So up in my side, even though the boy no get caught. Been around where I see, say, you know me. Forget the guys where they come around with the money. How many times make I tell you, say I be some different fella, but you dey want you get mommy. And you me see, for me so cause see me now see. And you me when you not ready, me say yeah. So when your friend want to know Something can you know me On the sun that's here Something can you know me And then you won't be my new You won't be my new strong Just tell me what the man do You won't be my new papa Papa I have to say that I have been grooving to that song ever since I heard it. I saw it on um, Instagram. I feel like it's something that, you know, your grandma and her grandchild, you know, together you'd be grooving to that because it speaks to both of, you know, the generations. What do you think? Well, I think that is an up-to-date rendition of a classic song. I mean, tight horn section, tight bass, amazing vocals and that rap. I mean, oh yeah, that yeah. that uh, that really updates such a classic song, and the fact that it's it's near enough almost acoustic. You mm. Know? Mm. There's no, there's mm. no drum kit, and it still sounds good. And I think it's it's a great watch. Amazing, amazing, watch. amazing. Yeah, and I believe you got to have a bit of a chat with them as well, didn't yes. you? Yes, I caught up with. Um, Biko and and Nimanche mm, and yeah. this is what they had to say. Hi, hello, and welcome to the final edition of High Life Music um, Deconstructed. Um, I am very, very happy and very pleased to have me today. Um, Biko and Manche from Lala. Um, welcome, Biko. Welcome, Manche. Good to have you guys on. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Anyway, I remember the first time I saw that video on YouTube of you guys playing that cover of um, Uhuru Professionals Booby. I mean, I, 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 I obviously knew Manche before because I'd met him at Jazz Cafe in London, I think, last summer. But I thought, what the hell is this? I thought, this is absolutely amazing. I, and these guys are very young. These are not old guys. These guys are like really young hip guys. So I'm thinking, well, I mean, there has to be something there. There has to be some sort of outer experience that made you guys decide to go down the path of, of playing proper high life. So, I mean, what's the inspiration or what was the inspiration behind, behind Lala? Um, so over over the years, Manche and I, um, we've been discussing ways to preserve the sound. And I think in 2019, we had a discussion about how to create a platform where people get to perform uh, songs that we, we normally don't hear all the time, yeah. classics and the, and the, the golden records. Yeah. And yeah to find ways to improve my personal um, stagecraft in terms of uh, programming some of the, the, the beats before I go on stage. And then yeah. I think fast forward uh, 2020, 
we kicked off with um, the cover that you saw. And the song was a song that I had on radio on yeah. uh, one, one station. I think it was GBC. They had this program, High Life something. And I was just yeah. sleeping at night. I was like, nah, I need to. <laughs> I need to I need to know who made this song. I need to listen to this again. So I found it. I shared it with Manche. I think I think he knew it already, but you know, I shared it with him and then over yeah. time I said this is what I want to this is what I want to do. I want to bring it back and add some rap and you know, just recreate it so that people who never got the chance to hear it can hear it and know that, you know. The sound from this space is is amazing. The high life is amazing. Yeah, true, yeah. true. I mean that rap that rap element that you embedded within that song. I mean, yeah. it made it so so hip. I mean, mm -hmm. if I say if I say hip, I can imagine yeah the youngsters actually actually sort of thinking yeah those are really nice punchlines. Is that is that not what they call it in rap music? Yeah. Yes. They must be thinking, yeah, some heavy punchlines, and the guy looks yeah. really cool. So, yeah, maybe we'll yeah. slightly sort of start gravitating towards it. But saying that again, next question goes to um, 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 Mancha. Um, Mancha, I know, obviously, illustrious, playing with the most illustrious Pat Thomas in the Kwashibu area band. Um, and you're a producer as well. You do um, help other people produce music. You have produced music for other people in the past. Um, from being a high life musician, from a musician's perspective, what do you think can be done to actually make high life more appealing to to the to the younger generation? You know, the people that want to listen to auto tuned sort of modern contemporary pop music you know what do you do to actually bridge that gap because your your, your sound is 100 percent organic you know 100 percent okay so i'll say there's the need to like you know collaborate um um like looking at what me and biko did with lala yeah you know um yeah there was that collaboration you could have just like Good. I've just like done like gone. He's some young guy, and he loves <laughs> <Yeah>. like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Me, I play a lot of her life. I'm yeah. not sure he plays a lot of her life outside, like you know, and like I think that's like an example of um, collaborating to create that kind of you know sound, you know, yeah. and and reach sort of the younger audience as well. I guess. Yeah. 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 So, okay. so how how do you think the younger audience now do they still look at high life as some sort of oh this is old school and and let let me just reiterate here I don't think high life is old school I think <laughs> high life never ages it is what it is yeah you know it's it's not old school I mean it's like saying rock music is old school they've been yeah. playing rock since 1950 yeah you know and it's not even classified as, as old school so um, last last one manche so i mean you've mentioned collaborations but do you think probably if young musicians start learning how to play instruments they would gravitate towards playing more natural organic sound then i, I think so it will help yeah a lot yeah you know yeah it will really help them to to get that sound, that Ghanaian sound. Yeah. That one, um, when you start learning, you start hearing some things in the songs, and then you are yeah. like, um, oh, what is that? Like, I want to learn that. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, because now the music in the past had like more um, music, like arrangements yeah. when you listen to them than now. Now yeah. it's like you just hear the same progression throughout. The same progression. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's just like breaks, like same progression. <laughs> no bridges. No bridges. Nothing. Like nothing. Nothing. It's just... No, you don't even get to hear like a solo. Yeah. 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 But you hear music in the past, and then when you hear, you know this is like yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and then there's a solo in there. You know, you know. Yeah. 
you are listening to. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, um, I think when they learn, I mean, it will take them. It, it takes. It will take them back to the music we we have, like yeah. our vintage sound. I mean, we can't. We can't maybe fully go back, but we can try to blend the sounds. You know, yeah. to I mean, yeah. get up. So we can try and sort of meet halfway, a, 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 a very equal blend of organic sound and I'd say electronic sounds as well. A very balanced blend. Yeah, I think, I think. I there's, think there's a song me and Biko worked on and I think yeah. that's like a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. uh, yeah. the song called Saint Kwan, it was released in November 2017. Yeah, November 27th, just last year. And I think just as he said, it's a perfect blend because you have all the elements of the, you know, the true high life yeah. and you have some little ways there to, to, you know, beef it up and make it, you know, sound more appealing to the younger listener. And also like finding ways to make it visually appealing is like, I, I look at it from the point of fashion, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, and then like the aesthetics of my videos will yeah. draw you to love the sound. Like you have no option. Once you are drawn to to the brand and I'm giving you something that, you know, you can relate to, you're definitely going to love it. Yeah. No, I mean, I totally agree with you. I mean, that boils down to the point you, you don't always have to like I, I mean i said that once before you don't always have to wear african print to sort of play high life i mean there's nothing wrong with wearing an adidas t-shirt yeah trainers and yes play high life music i think i think that is it it has to be upgraded that's that's the yeah. word Yes, <laughs> we have to upgrade. we have to upgrade it so i'm yeah. coming back to you biko again I mean, I know in Ghana, um, there are a lot of little organizations that support what you people do, because what you people do is not regular mainstream. I would consider it more like avant-garde niche, mm, mm, you know? Um, so yeah. what, what support do you get? What has support been like from, say, the media houses, support from um, um, radio stations? Tell us what, what has the support been for your uh, type of sound, right? So, to in the beginning, it was you know kind of hard, but with time, I found um, people like Shelly from Pomanso who would always ask for music and feature in their movies. So, yeah. new listeners can find me. Um, yeah. she does amazing with like the new couple of artists and then who are who are doing like. You know amazing music yeah. and um apart from here i could say like a few uh, radio stations who have also supported i can mention yfm uh, plus fm live fm yeah 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 i think those are the main people as i say fm recently um they also came on board to like you know support what, what i've been doing and then also my friends family you know, without them, I, 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 I could have stopped along the way, you know. Well, so, yeah, I mean, I like to I thank mean, everybody who's been supporting us. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, I'm quite pleased to hear the fact that you mentioned a few sort of FM stations. And well, I mean, if you've got them supporting you, I think that is a very good start because at least they've started. You guys are not mainstream, as I yeah. said, avant garde yes. niche. But mm -hmm at least you've got this little ecosystem that's keeping you going and yeah. probably who knows fingers crossed i mean it's my hope that things change for, for for the future and you guys get the required support um and that you need but yes to 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 manche i know you've just finished touring with pat thomas you were meant to tour again yeah. but unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately it didn't happen but um, it's it's not only you it's happened to us as well i'm a dj it happened to me i mean <laughs> nothing for the whole of that summer um yeah so i mean what was it what was it like being on i know your tours are, are hectic i mean back to back nearly every day 
what is it like being on tour with Kwame Aboa and the Kwashibu area band? Um, with, Pat, with Pat Thomas, obviously. <laughs> okay, you know, going on tour with um, that was like my first tour. Yeah. With, yeah, with Pat Thomas and Kwashibu area band, and I would say it's 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 been like, and it is one of the amazing moments of my musical journey. Like, it's right, yeah. Yeah, one of the biggest moments for me, you know, yeah. 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 because yeah. you find yourself um, on stage with um, Pat Thomas, Kwame Yaboa, Kweku Mensa, Sunday, and all of them, like, Ben, like, it's yeah. crazy. It's, 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 and I happen to be the youngest in the band too, so. Oh my yeah. God. But it was fun. It was, you know, moving from one point, to, from one gig to the other. Sometimes you move from the airport straight to the stage. You know, there's, there's no like, there's no rest, but I'm like, yeah, say, hey, you might so I'm doing it, you know. <laughs> Yeah. I, think, I, think, I think you did a fantastic job. I mean, Biko, you've toured as well. I mean, can you can you tell us some stories? Because I, I'm I'm sure, like, sort of playing in various places in like the states and stuff like that, yeah. you get you get your fair your fair share of attention. Right. Um, if I'm going to be honest, uh, the reception and the level of respect that people have for what we do outside of this space is is different. Trust me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I played one one gig in New Jersey. Those guys got me from my house to yeah. the venue. They got me back, paid the full amount, <laughs> which you don't you don't get from here. What, 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 what was the size of what was the size of your rider then? Was it like what did you have on your rider? <laughs> it wasn't too much. It wasn't too much. It wasn't too much. But they still, you know. Like they were just on point and you know they take care of you as like the artist yes. you know they respect, respect the artist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they respect the craft they appreciate what you give them because they understand that you're, you're here to serve them they listen to you they put their phones down <laughs> you know yeah. you know yeah. So, yeah i think it's it's beautiful when you play outside and it reminds you of the 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 depth of what you're doing like it's mm. what you're doing carries weight yeah. you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you realize it does, it does for real and and as, the job is yeah and as i said the last time i mean we would like to work with you guys in the future i mean i would like to have like a proper evening where we'll have a full stream like we can talk to everybody and you guys would play and and we'd have an interlude and so yeah we're working on that if you if if just in case you didn't know so i'm telling you so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah maybe like four five six songs we'll, we'll work something out when that time comes so yeah it's 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 amazing to have you guys on so yes tell us what have you guys got in what have you guys got for us in the future i mean what what's the future like for lala sessions um, i mean one each i think I think Biko first, and then Mancha, and then yeah. I think you go. <laughs> Mancha, you go first, then. What's what's the future like for you guys? What 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 are the plans? I mean, if it's top secret, you can decide not to tell us. <laughs> people people like to keep things top secret. No, 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 no. Just, <laughs> just let them in. <laughs> Okay, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. We are still. I mean, we still have plans, and um, you know, um, I think every day we are looking into new things. Yeah. But for now, um, we are going to continue with what we started because of COVID, we we had to stop and you know, yeah. Yeah, go back and then come back again to do it. But for now, um, we we are trying to find a new way to you know. Um, to still keep on giving out the music mm. and, then, and then keep adding our switch to it so that we yeah. have yeah, something people will love. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm probably jumping the gun here, Biko, but um, I'm actually looking forward to an album, actually. So what's the future? <laughs> oh, <laughs> from, 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 from Lala. <laughs> from Lala first and then you. Um that that wouldn't be a problem at all we just we just that wouldn't be a problem okay that be a problem. 
Cool. Yeah, because so, Maja and I, we lock in most most of the time just to talk, just to vibe, just to, yeah. And even the the recent record that we worked on together, it was just me visiting him right here, and he was just playing the guitar. I started. <laughs> I just I just knew that was it, and then we okay. magic. So yeah. um, I don't think an album is you know far fetched. You know, it's it, it's possible. I look yeah. forward to it. This is, yeah, this, is, this, is, this is a personal crusade. I look forward to that album. Brian. All right, all right. I'm not joking. Yeah. It's 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 gonna be hot, proper hot. Yeah, yeah. Well, we had a conversation it. about um, you know, a live album. Yeah. Also, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. um, I know that's a lot of work and a lot of uh, resources needs like need to be put into into consideration so we're we're not in a rush but we'll make it happen good i like actually i actually love the idea of the live album i love yeah. it yeah i really really love it <laughs> anyway Charlie, thank you very much for you guys um for joining us again and i wish you all the best with lala and your personal endeavors as well and we look forward to seeing you guys very soon. And once again, thank you very, very much. Thank you too for having us. We're really happy we to be on board. And we appreciate the, the level of um, commitment you have towards what we are doing because, yeah. you know, not everybody understands what we, what we are trying to put across. So thank you too. I appreciate you. Thank you thank so you much. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fantastic. That was a Hello. really amazing interview. So much content there. I think they're a perfect example of why collaboration works, don't you think? Perfectly. I mean, yeah, two two heads are better than one, as they always say. Yeah, and we saw your two heads in the screen as well. Was that weird <laughs> seeing yourself twice? <laughs> cool. Um, yeah. Well, talking of collaboration, I think the next person that we're going to hear from is a good friend of yours. So Cheche Ku also has a band, Super Pong Stars, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. So tell us um, about che, him. Che, che is a good friend of mine. I mean, I met him through De La Boutry years ago um, at Leon Frances. Um, so Cheche Ku was born in Ghana. Sorry, Cheche Ku was born in Nigeria, but he grew up in Ghana. Beg your pardon. Um, he he he's sort of amazing guitarist absolutely amazing guitarist so um he enrolled at the prestigious um, university of science and technology in kumasi um to study building technology actually um, wow. and, and later decided to switch roles and go to the court of um um the great legendary guitarist uh um okay, Cole Cole why did that slip me? He went to he went to the court of Eja Eja Konimo to actually learn the rudiments of of palm wine guitar, and which he actually draws a lot of inspiration from. Um, he is the main brain behind the Super Opong band, um, Super Opong Stars, and they are quite big on the international scene. Um, North Sea Jaffs Festival. Um, they've played recently with Salif Keita and. Richard Bonner at the Stan Big Ghana Jazz Festival, actually. And and they are working on an album with um, Philophone, an amazing um, German label that has actually set up Camp in Kumasi. We'll talk about them later. So, mm -hmm. yes, um, I, so, I, I, yeah, go on. No, I was just going to say, so first of all, we have the performance and then yes. the, yeah. Yes, yes. So, yes. Um, this is Chichiku performing a very special exclusive clip just for us. In this series, this is Chichiku from Super Pong Stars. Stay tuned.
Kukrumio sa wapati ya kukrumie Kukrumi sa wapati ya kukrumie Kukrumi ya doye uwe kukrumie Bikro ya za mama nte mana nte Swaba kukrumie Kukrumi sa wapati ya kukrumie Kukrumi ya uwodo kukrumie Kukrumi sa wapati ya kukrumie Kukrumi ya doye uwe kukrumio Mikro ya za mama nte mana nte I drew it here, I am far. I am far. I drew it here, I am full. Many I have gone and seen in the manda. With your cry, I do see can be done and far. Kukru me a do ye we kukru me o. Me kru na san mandan tem mandan tem swaba kukru me. For pennies, Saturday night I give you dollar. Friday night you ask for pennies, Saturday night I give you dollar. When I come, you say you sick. When I go, you say you well. When I come, you say you sick. When I go, you say you well. Today not day for me and you, we're gonna find champion. You ask for pennies, Saturday night I give you dollar. Friday night you ask for pennies, Saturday night I give you dollar. When I come, you say you sick, and when I go, you say you well. Today not day for me and you, we're gonna find champion. Today not day for me and you, we're gonna find champion. Baby, someone lay, someone, someone, someone lay. That was amazing, breathtaking. <laughs> I don't think I have words to just encapsulate how much I enjoyed that. It's like <laughs> filtering the purest form of you know high life the yampon site riff you can hear it so much i apologize for going on but Chechaku, you're amazing <laughs> over to you but <laughs> well fair enough i mean yeah i mean I, i'm equally stuck for words but that was a striking performance that was world-class performance from from my friend there, Chechaku. But I mean, yeah, I will not keep it. I will not, I will not keep you waiting. I actually caught up with him um, a couple of days ago, actually. And yeah, this is what he had to say. So hello, people of HMB. Um, as promised, um, I have got with me here, Eugene Ampedu, AKA, Chichiku um, himself. Um, welcome, Chichiku, and thank you very much for taking time out to, to speak to us here um, at HMD. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, HMD, for having me. It's a yes, pleasure. Yes, 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 yes. I think, I think the last time we spoke, um, you had just come back from Ghana, and I think you played a gig in Ghana. How was it? If you could tell us more, because some of us wish we could be in Ghana now, unfortunately. We're stuck in England. <laughs> yeah, it's true. That was in November last year. It's already, yeah. And I have just also come back. From, well, that was last year again. Just also yeah. come back from Ghana. So, 
but it was nice, very nice trip back to Ghana. A lot of work, work and a bit of a family and a holiday. Excellent. So, uh, but it's kind of weird saying that I'm going to Ghana for holiday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, they say Africa is the place to be now. It's always been the yeah. place to be now. But man, now when you go, you really feel it. And I felt it, you know. I can imagine. Especially I with the situation imagine. around the way people... You know, we've got a problem as well, but I think we, we're lucky and people, they appreciate the life and they make the life, living life scene, you know, outdoors, good, good. friends, good. Meeting, playing music. That was nice. Great. So, I mean, we're, we're, we've got you on here, so because we want to ask you a few, a few questions, a um, few very interesting questions. So um, the first one I'd start with is I... Obviously, I know you from Ghana from way back in the day, from the days at Allianz, playing with Della and stuff like that. Um, I know that it's it's quite a challenge being a musician in Ghana, actually being a live musician or trying to play with a band in Ghana. I know it's 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 a challenge because there is near enough no support network. So um, can, can you tell us more? Because I'm sure people would like to know what some of the challenges are um as a young musician playing in ghana who is obviously not playing mainstream pop music yeah, yeah obviously there are there are challenges a lot a lot a lot and especially <laughs> because i in the last couple of years i've been used to another system and i've experienced other systems around the world so the challenges in ghana even get amplified the way i perceive them now you know yeah uh, first of all i would say venues 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 the thing mm. is, you've got loads of musicians. Ghana has like low, every every church has a band. I keep saying yes. every church has got a band. In Accra yeah. alone, there's what thousands of churches. That means there's thousands band, thousands of bands are playing every Sunday. Right. So yeah, one of the venues is a uh, the church, but then it's not only there. You you talking to I'm I'm more interested in the secular secular venues and the the yeah. is woefully like inadequate venues so the yeah. musicians cannot 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 perform if you decide to do like a tour of a cry and perform unless you are erecting your own stage or mounting your own stage you probably like in a week play all the the good places that the the there are in Accra. so that's the first challenge because then if musicians know they, there's places to play there's audience to meet then then they up their game and then they put together a band or put together a project and, and play you know yeah yeah i think then i think you're other... right yeah. you're right on that sense in terms of the venue a very important point because i mean i can name the venues that play live music in accra <laughs> on this on this republic two, three, three. Two, three, three. that republic. that one in east megon shay maria uh, she, she. She's a freak. She's a freak. She's a, She's freak. a freak. Yeah. And maybe uh, Piano Alliance Bar. Concerts, you know, bar. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's it. Um, you've got Zen Gardens now that was doing things. Abajo Art Center. That's yes, doing Abajo. Uh, yeah. Was it every Abajo. Thursday night? Which is really Tuesday like, night? yeah, last days, which is the Mr. K is doing an amazing job, like putting together yeah. that evening. Yeah. Um, of course, you can talk about Kumasi, where there is a lot of music as well, but mainly for the funerals and you know a bit of stuff like that. But it's not like it's not like before. I remember meeting Big Wellington. Oh, was it Big Wellington? Uh, Baxton's dad, who was who's a musician from back in the day, saying like even the, if you had instruments, there were if you if you like a, a guy who had a, a set of instruments, there would yeah. be like people always chasing him because there were like three bands getting engaged every weekend. They had to play. You know, three days wow. uh, like did we, you know, people are busy. Yeah, people, venue, people venue really, is a really big busy. thing. Okay. Venue is a it's a big thing. And uh, then what I find quite interesting is um is the public. Yeah. You know, you've got let's let's go back as far back as ninety ninety eight there about which is the the last periods where bands like western diamonds and you know uh, the, yeah. a bit of the bands Mar that were left from marriott marriott, marriott yeah, were still active um though people from back then who were outgoing had the they, they had this idea to 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 consume live music so let's say 25 30 years ago we started losing the public started losing the appeal to consume live music. 
you know and there is a way of consuming live music when someone comes to stage to perform like you're not hearing all the finesse that they would be able to give you when if they've recorded in the studio yes. you know everything is 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 raw but that means it's also organic and it's beautiful and it's it's different everything is getting cooked and it's fresh you know yes. but people people they lost touch on how to consume things fresh that music. If, look when you go to the restaurants the food is prepared the food is prepared maybe four five hours ago and then they serve everyone you know whereas ideally restaurants are like places you go you order from the menu and then in a short moment the food is prepared with fresh ingredients fresh for you that that is that is the best way people appreciate food everywhere in the world you know yeah. ghana has lost that ghana is like now the food has to be prepared two weeks ago and then now you're coming to eat it you understand <laughs> can, I, can i stop you there i really like that comparison because the food can be prepared <laughs> two weeks the, the food can be prepared two weeks ago actually put in the freezer frozen and then and then uh, thawed and then now you yeah. eat it so that's how the music has gotten so when people have gone to sit and they they are watching a band they still have this feeling that oh cake in there was say you know those kind yeah. of things and so the public has lost this the sense of appreciating music the last few years we've tried to put this and it, it, it's beginning to come back now when people are realizing that when they have places like food places or restaurant houses are going to put like an acoustic set or like little stages beginning to come back and that means the the public needs to get educated and needs to hear more music being cooked on the spot to to appreciate the 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 nuances of music like that so a big part exactly. of this is what is what puts people even is what put a lot of the hip life guys off performing live because they were used so much to the compressed um mp3 sound that on yeah. live when the bad band was backing them that more opened sound that they could get they they were not used to so then you you kind of feel ah uh, they they you 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 pick up that something is missing from them you know yeah whereas yeah, like totally guys who perform live when they play you see that oh yeah they, they it's they are in their realm they are performing and that's their style so a lot of education the, the, a lot of something needs to be done to get the public re-educated again i remember 98 music was the last time that we had music education in the, in the ghanaian uh, curriculum, curriculum the, yeah. the secondary yeah. school and i was one of the last students who studied a bit of that and then it was taken oh, out okay so, so um not not to stop you there so you mentioned yeah. venues as one of the difficulties that 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 young Ghanaians go through um in order to sort of hone their craft so apart from the issue of venues what other factors um what other problems do young musicians um face especially as i said people that play like the way you play people that play live music people that play with live bands yeah well the the biggest one is if when you've gotten all these in place you still need the music to be heard by through a wider media which means radio is responsible uh you know yeah. radio uh they, they, they are not i don't think they are giving enough quota or they are they are playing enough music that is that that carries that live element all the music that right. has been played is that is is produced music sequenced music you know yeah. so again we are not we are not educating the people to to accept music that we've made before that we used to love we, we ditched that, that that is sad the other thing is um <clears throat> is the bands themselves you know it's very difficult for this like these days you go on you check on social media media and it's amazing what the young like young people are playing in ghana yeah sometimes yes. I say why these guys are not able to form projects put together bands like and and create unique identities away from each other because it's either that we are all doing the same thing yeah or or we are content to stay in a certain corner most of, most of the time in the church and play on a sunday and it's finished these guys they are so skillful that if they were able to also bring up compelling projects then it will it will uh it will it will open up people be, begin to sit up and say oh charlie check what these guys are doing you know yes. so that aspect is also missing then Another thing I find, which is not helping uh, this side of the music to move a lot more, is is the way we've sold ourselves. You know, the, the hip life movement when it started, one of the things that they did was compelling music videos. 
Yes. They used more technology and one standard of video making was available to them, but they were able to make compelling music videos. And if you if you consider that, if you compare that to the live mu movement in Ghana since the yeah. 60s, since the 50s, that is totally lost. Is either that we lost the videos through the, the fire thing in GBC or but to my best of knowledge, the musicians they didn't make a, a lot of videos, you know, and videos okay. sell a lot. Like I can operate. Yeah. I you know, so we need to invest more and make and and show our images through videos as in project. If you've seen Coldplay playing, you've you've seen One Direction, when you can you can feel the air band and they are still playing and those videos yeah. sell them. Yeah. When you watch the hip life guys, they projected themselves as rappers and you know, like DJs and stuff like that, and sold themselves. This is, I think, this is the direction the bands also need to do need to, to be able to sell the sound because image image is very important as well. Yeah, and not just the way you look, but also you know, giving the music through through film storytelling to people. So there's a lot, but these are some yeah. of the things that I think uh, uh, make make up the the core of the problem yeah yeah i mean i totally agree with you with all of them i mean you've mentioned venues you've mentioned support from the media i'm sure bloggers don't even cover live music bloggers are more interested in in other things i'm not going to say but they're more interested in other things and and then you've 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 mentioned the fact that it's quite difficult to maintain people you know mm. so i really appreciate that we know you had your training with 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 the master himself, um, Ejak Onimo, at your time Ejak at Ojo. university, <laughs> at your time at university, at, um, um, at your time at University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, I mean yeah. that must have been like getting training from the source because when it comes to folklore, when it comes to traditional music, um, Ejak Onimo is more or less at the forefront. I mean, yeah. what was it like? What was it like studying, being a student? Of 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 a Jaco Nimo in Kumasi, man. I tell you, look, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah, <laughs> this is a picture I made. I made. Uh, I made. I made some pictures of me when I visited him the last last time I was in Ghana. Yeah, Kunimo is. I don't know this man. This mystery surrounding him is always. Uh, you know, you when you have somebody that everyone thinks, oh, we just call him oh, sapa pana ti 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 no bonyom no, you don't even know where it is. And someone takes you to his house and you, oh, this is the man, and then he starts playing to you, and it's just like total, I don't know. But yeah. the experience was like this: <clears throat> At, in first year, by the end of first semester, I had lost interest in like my school called. Like, what, 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 what were you? What were you? What were you studying? Actually, I went to study. <laughs> building technology it's, it's oh the course God. that trains you to become um, like a quantity surveyor or like a bit like you know public works engineering civil those kind of things so you, so, 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 you, so you went from a, a a sort of a building technology student yeah 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 yeah, to, yeah. What, what, what a jump <laughs> yeah i know well so you know one of the things one of the i always remember this when i visited Ko first the first thing he said to me that is that music is is frozen architecture this this is the quote he said to me you know and for the first time like okay could you, could, could you repeat that again please i like yeah, that he said, he said to me that the, the, in 2000 i believe this is 2003 when i met him first he said yeah music is frozen music is frozen architecture and as uh, rightly as you said it's it, it it's it's sort of like a big jump, but this saying that he said to me sort of like put everything together for me. Yeah. You know, and anyway, in any way, by the end of the first semester, I did, I was not really into what I went to do again. So then Kodimo became sort of like my university. I was visiting him literally every day, you know, yeah. then he invited me into his group and I was playing with him for, for the rest of the, I, I then for the next four or five years, I kept playing with him, playing with him. Throughout all those years, every single day, there was something new that he yes. he, he pulled out of the hat. <laughs> Exciting learning be, experience. Yeah, it would be like a new guitar line, a new guitar style, a new guitar that he... Like you think, <laughs> oh, you've seen all the guitars this man has. And then one day he goes, oh, uh, Eugene, go oh, shake guitar with mommy. Then he brings it out, you know, and you... <laughs> Or he might tell you about an, a guitarist that you you go and, and read about, you know, yeah. people he yeah. met, all the places he traveled, every oh, little right. thing yeah. that he, every little thing that he says, you know, 
like so much worth and all of that so um yeah i, I it was such a great experience and I, I bet, till yeah. now i feel like i know him so much but every time i visit him there's always something new that i learn yeah. always something and i'm sure everyone that goes to him picks up this is what you pick up from the man that is like uh, he always says that you must be careful with things because uh ghana there's a lot of libraries on fire and oh, he himself when he always right, says that, okay. i look at him and i say yo this is the man this is this is the the pre, the, the the primary library on fire i mean so right. that we need to you know but i think the last time i visited him um there were some interesting projects coming up and i i just i'm just praying for strength and energy for yeah. him because that yeah. will help a lot to preserve his legacy and preserve exactly. what traditional music has offered uh, yeah so, i mean I'm, I'm a strong advocate of traditional music but mm. it's such a shame i went to kumasi in 2018 but i never had i think I, you gave me the even ah, yeah. the contact but i never mm -hmm. had the chance to see him but i think uh, konimo is more or less a walking a walking database of 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 our music of our traditional music so i guess you being a student of him will obviously carry on that tradition of also um um imparting that knowledge that probably nobody else at, at your level has been able to to attain anyway so moving on to my next question um as you know in ghana i wouldn't say there's a divide but there's this sort of gap between yeah. people playing between there's this sort of gap between musicians essentially between musicians playing live music once mm. again i'd say organic ready to eat music mm. and sort of mainstream contemporary pop musicians mm. But, but we're all Ghanaians, you know, yeah. virtually we're all singing the same language. Yeah. But why, why, why is there that artistic sort of gap and what can be done to bridge that artistic gap? Well, uh, this, the, the gap, it arose because of Ghana's situation. We know how our music evolves, especially yeah. to the late 70s and 80s, the, the political situation that we had and why that aspect of our music came down you know the the organic forms yeah came down in, in the way being consumed and the the cultures that the subcultures that evolved with it and what what has come up what has come up after that was not only music but was a was a lifestyle that support that was supposed to sell attention and you yes. know with what we've gotten into the world now about 75 percent of the, the the biggest musicians is because of the amount of attention that they sell yeah it's not only the okay. attention that they are but you before you you would like j a adofu when he was performing his stage antics were superb he was yeah. arresting attention you know yes he was selling the music by arresting attention now they all don't only sell the music they probably sell more attention than the music than the music totally yes yeah. so this this has created the big gap because when you when you're performing on stage with a band, uh, you it, it it seems to me you care more about the music than really selling a sort of attention. Otherwise, yeah. you would play shit. Otherwise, you wouldn't you will not get that gig in the first place. You know, <laughs> if you're playing, no one is gonna invite you to play in the first place. You know. Yeah, you're right. You're totally right. Yeah. But yeah. uh, these days, if you're singing shit, sorry, if you're singing bad. Yeah. uh and you, you know it's your antics on stage and your as they call your swag that really people are looking at and and the and the auto tune, don't and the auto -tune. <laughs> <laughs> that's what people are looking at and this is this is what has created the main gap okay you know um i think the the the, the musicians that came after that that generation we we lo we didn't have we didn't have the tools as the people Ambule and those guys back in the era they had yeah. we had to find a way to cover up to make up for for the shortcomings and so once we saw america they were doing this and selling that attention we we, we grabbed that and then we pushed it uh the the thing is you know media always you know you have traditional media even when you have media that come up and is more inclined to uh younger mainstream you know leftist yeah. ideas you still have traditional ones that stay and stick to the 
to the old yeah. rules and do things. In Ghana, we did we apart from GBC, we didn't really have that. Everybody went a totally different direction and, yeah. and carried along that the new the new movement with it. And yeah. so everything else was was left in the in the in the in the, so, in the form. So, so saying that what can be done to actually bridge the gap? So there would be those 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 other musicians would tend to mm. appreciate your craft and mm. and sort of try and relate with you guys more. Yeah. Collaborations, uh, I, any chance? Yeah, collaborations, for sure, for sure. Collaborations. Now, uh, I think it is very dangerous if we tend to to put too much classifications and and dissections in between the the the, the music forms, the, the yeah. movements that are evolved, because then. Or the musicians will not try to to merge their spaces together. Yeah. The musicians from the two angles. So collaborations is a is a good thing. Um, um, then of course, the, like for us, who are playing live or organic yeah. styles, must also you know there's a bit of the attention thing that you can sell that does not have a negative affect in the way you play. Definitely, effect on totally. the, or the way you play. And we probably yeah. should be should be looking at that as well so you know we are not doing totally wrong things and they are not doing totally wrong things there there are good things at each each size that we can we can fuse together and as as always with arts the the new generation that comes up and doesn't have like things to do they they always i realize they always can borrow elements from different aspects from way back combine and create something new or advance what they, are, what they want to do further. And I think this is what we need to do now. You Thank know? you. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a short, it's a short conversation, but I think it's, mm. it's been a great informative um, 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 conversation, but um, I just want to tell you that we will possibly have you on again in the new year. Maybe when yes. your guys come over, when your guys come over, um, 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 in the summer, all being good for tour, we might probably have you play a live stream for us, straight, we'll straight, straight from wherever in Europe you may find yourselves. Yeah, we'll, okay, we'll do that. I might probably go to Ghana again uh, before the yeah, and maybe even in Ghana we can we can do stream something for them. But this year, fingers crossed, we will do things. Yes, yes. So. Once again, I'd like to say, Checheku, thank you very much. So I've been speaking to Checheku, um, the leader of the Super Opong Band, and very good friend of mine. Once again, thank you very much, Checheku. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you, HMD. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yes. So that was that was my chat with Checheku. And. Well, there's, there's, there's so much to say. I think a really strong topic is education. That was yeah. a thread that came through. But um, without further ado, I'm quite excited because we have spoken about women in the past and their influence. Yes. And we have a woman who will be speaking next. And her name is Nyona Wofia. And she... Agoso. Agoso, yes. Of the Agoso band, yes. Yes. Um, and I think she introduces herself fantastically. She is also, she's a lead vocalist and she's also a painter. So I think it's best that we go straight into her. Yep.
That was a fantastic performance. It just shows yeah. the diversity of our our music, of live yeah. performance, yeah. Yes, I totally agree with you. It, it lays bare the performance as in it's it's not just about high life. Yes, it's high life, but we have to, to take into consideration the other forms of, of, of music that probably do not get the press that they, they, they need to get, really. So yeah. um, that was Agosso. I think we got the introduction slightly over the bar, didn't we? Well, I mean, not to yeah. worry. I think she gives exactly. a really good ex explanation about what she does, which I think will be next, and it will flow exactly. into your interview with her. Thank you. My name is Nyonwofia Agoso. I'm an Afro world musician and a fine artist. I'm the lead vocalist of my band, Agoso. I use traditional instruments in the making of my music. And as a fine artist, I do abstract and impression paintings. I'm inspired by the African knowledge system. It is what opens our mind, body, and soul into laws, mechanisms, and mysteries of existence. Music, therefore, becomes the root of the African knowledge system. This system is what leads us into the evolution of organic science and technology. It is very easy to describe or define what I do as traditional music. However, I think it's fairer to say that I produce my music using the traditional instrument. I love the sound of our indigenous instruments so much. You know, in our shrines and monasteries, we drum, we sing, we dance to different types of indigenous music. And each of these indigenous music leads us into self-discovery. It leads you into that hall where you are able to tap into yourself and bring out any style of music or any art at all you want to do. Looking around, I realized that there is a very tiny interest for indigenous instruments. Basically because people think that our instruments cannot take you beyond or cannot affect the society, the world at large positively. But that is very wrong. I therefore felt the need to use them to create awareness in my own way. The obstacles are a lot, but to mention a few, there is that struggling economy of which is unfriendly to the arts and the music industry continues to shift from the life music. At this stage, it makes it difficult to find women who are into life music. And even if you find any, the few that we have around, they find difficulties when it comes to publicity and exposure. Apart from this, women are prevented at a very tender age due to academic studies. Meanwhile, music is the greatest tool in educating body, mind and soul. Our education system does not also support the introduction of our traditional music. For instance, a dancing, drumming, singing, storytelling, all these things as a way of learning is what tunes and trains the mind of the child to bring out that creative genius in him or her for the benefit of his society and the world at large. The role of women in music, being it traditional or contemporary, is yet to evolve. This is because our traditional indigenous music, again, as I've already mentioned, is no more taught, both at home and in schools. In the old Africa, our indigenous music was taught all over the community, and this was the basis of our life. It is who we are. Every African is a musician, is a drama. We've all got the art. That is who we are. That is our nature. But these things are not going on anymore. 
in today's africa you can see clearly that servitude education and religion has taken all these things away from us we are left empty and this kind of brainwashing which has taken our music our language our culture our nature who we are it has wiped it all off and we have lost insight into our indigenous music which is the root of who we are we've lost it a society without an insight into its indigenous music culture is a lost society it's a lost continent it's a lost community and this is the situation we find ourselves today and it doesn't only affect the women but all genders The future is sadly very slim unless women get active in the studying and playing of instruments, especially their traditional indigenous instruments and music, and also getting involved in the sound recording process. This is the foundation of every musician. Bernard, I don't know how you find these people. There is so much to unpick from just that little small interview, you know, yes, looking at women. Is. Yeah, carry on. Looking at the role of women, the challenges there, just looking at how our music, which was our form of education, you know, mind, body and soul is yeah. not, it's not there anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic. I just wanted fantastic. to say that, if some people, there was a break in transmission um, on YouTube. I think we've just had a few people mention it. Um, okay. Hopefully it I wasn't think, for too long. I think we're back up, I think. Yeah, I think but, the, yeah. but just to say that that was really powerful. So. Okay, great. Um, so we're gonna move on um, swiftly. So, um, the next, the next musician is actually a very good friend of mine. Um, um, he has played and produced for Osibisa. He has, he's, he's a guitar player for Craig David. Um, amazing producer. He's worked with Ghana's finest from Pat Thomas to Nana to Four to, to um, um, Kojo Enchi to Amachi Dede. Um, and he is currently in Accra at the moment. But yes, um, I actually caught up with him and he ha he played some music for us. So yes, um, this is Kwame Abwe's rendition of Ya Santua, um, a typical Ghanaian folk song, but this time played on the Fender Roads. Um, Kwame Abwe with Ya Santua. <laughs>
the way yeah. he tinkles those ovaries. <laughs> no, I mean that 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 was that was so stirring. I mean, Kwame just played that just for us, and yeah, that rendition alone just gave me goosebumps. But mm. amazing! It shows you the talent we have in Ghana. The, the, Absolutely, the, the yeah. High the, the high grade quality of talent that we have. And you got to talk to him, didn't you? Yes, yes, I did. I did get to have a little um, chat with him as well. And yeah, this is what he had to say. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to the um, final version of, of High Life Music De Deconstructed. And I'm very, very happy and pleased to have with me on this very final episode, Mr. Kwame Ewa, all the way from Accra, Ghana. Kwame. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you, brother. <laughs> always, always, always good to see you. <laughs> man, well, man, do you realize I haven't seen you since 2019 now? I know it's terrible. I mean, the last time I saw you, Jazz Cafe Jazz London Cafe, with Pat yeah. Thomas, and yes. and that was it. And that was yeah. it. But yeah, yeah, it's good to see you again, though. Although it's taking it's quite a while well. to to track you down, it's taking quite you know a while. How it's like you know, know how it's busy. like, brother. Busy, 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 busy. Anyway, yeah. so um, how 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 is life in Ghana so far as music is concerned? I know over the over the Christmas period, you were out touring with with Kojo Inchi and Amachi Dede. Could you tell us how was yeah. it? I mean, two great stars. I wish I was there. No, that was amazing. <laughs> that was a great experience, and also, even though they have they share some audience they have i mean they both have different audiences so and, and they react differently to, to their, their music yeah and i realized that for the first time because we played to both audiences at the same time you had both of them all the audiences there at the same time some yeah. like both some sat down for one and you know ready for the other and some yeah. were like in the whole thing the whole time oh, it was incredible god. i enjoyed it oh yes. god i could imagine ghana christmas Yo, no, the Christmas time was nice, but it was it wasn't still easy because you still gotta you know preserve the excuse me um, the protocols of COVID nineteen. So yeah, not all the not all the situations were so um conducive. <laughs> conducive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, we, we we think we think in the same direction. So saying that as well, I mean, for me personally, I know for you as well. I mean, last summer was a total write-off i didn't play a single gig not yeah, even one i mean we had we had you know we had loads of festivals booked i didn't even play one i mean with musicians in ghana now how are musicians in ghana coping with the current situation of not being able to play because of because of covid19 that's a big issue here it's a big issue yeah. because majority of these guys don't have any, you know, there isn't an infrastructure that supports you that way to actually be able to fend for yourself in times like these and no one expected yeah. these to happen. So um, musicians are suffering quite a bit, especially the ones that the, the new, the, the new and young ones that have just come in and yeah. the ones that are maybe invested into things. I mean, we got hit as well because we were supposed to do our special, album you know with my band and patomas was supposed to do a special festival after our album release and we did a promo tour promo tour was yeah. successful we, we got yeah. like what 80 shows or something like that booked and then of course we didn't even do one of them yeah <laughs> so, you know, yeah if you think about that the other guys in the band that do not have studios or other stuff to depend on they will mm. actually they get to suffer a lot and um, yeah. that's what's happening um some are also able to get little bits of sessions in between, but it's not the same. You can't even, yeah. you know, the money's dropped down so much that it's just cut into three right now, and you just got one part of it. Damn. <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. it's anyway. It's it's it sounds Maybe, really I, grim. I, I, I think I, I think musicians in Ghana need some support. The musicians union, uh, I'm not sure how it's run, so it's not able to support people in situations or in these times. Yeah. It's a bit of a shame, but I mean, I can't blame them because I'm not sure how they're running, how many people have joined, how many, how many are paying their dues, and all that stuff for them oh, to uh, even government support and all that stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It gets looked into. Anyway, different story, different topic. <laughs> I can imagine. I mean, when it comes to Ghana music management and music rights and copyrights and royalties, 
I know that's a totally different kettle that's of fish. A whole different ball game, we, yeah. we have to set aside like three months to sit down and talk about it You're because right. it's quite it's it quite a lot. Facts to the table that that's, uh, exactly that. exactly. So yeah, I'm going to mention a few names. I mean, Osibisa, <laughs> Cat Stevens, <laughs> Miss Miss Dynamite, yeah, Miss <laughs> Mystique, Mystique, yeah, girl, girl yeah. band, yeah. Yeah. Nanatu. <laughs> <laughs> Nana to four, um, and yeah. Kojo Enchi. I mean, this is a cross session of really good professional musicians, you know, and all these musicians play live, and you are obviously a multi instrumentalist. In Ghana now, I can say live music is, a, is, is actually on like one leg now. I mean, what can be done from your point of view to, to get more people to actually play live you know what can be done to get to get the infrastructure in place to to make more people play live it's a very good question um the first thing i, th I think need to be done is to get more venues you know we yeah. need more venues without venues you can't create that place for people to go and play live Obviously, you can hear more live music in churches because there are loads of churches around and yeah. they have the instruments as well. So every two miles, you can meet a church and they have the gear. If that was the same with <laughs> venues, if venues had instruments, you can have a bunch of people just walk in there and start playing. Mm. That's one. And the yeah. second thing I think would help is if musicians like myself and people that do music that are not just commercial or popular music need to record a lot more content because mm. we are the ones that end up not recording as much when you want to hear afrobeats and all these other stuff you hear them i mean everywhere and they yeah. release music every every two seconds two minutes there's a new afrobeat artist afropop yeah. same as pop same as reggae same as other genres we don't have that yeah. with that in ghana right now people that play live um music find it hard to even record i mm. mean there are only a few places you can really have a decent recording done yeah. here yeah, yeah. You no know, so it's all it's all part of it i mean if we could kind of regulate that that would be really good and then yeah you know, can then be able to then play more go yeah, out more yeah. tour their yeah. music because there'll yeah. be you, know, you can play five venues in takara you can play five venues in kumasi you can play you know 20 venues in accra or yeah about, i mean venues not someone's yes. backyard <laughs> <laughs> well i mean well i mean i mean someone's backyard. No, just, not like just, you know just... in the middle of the street just you know <laughs> <laughs> well but i mean make, it, says, nice, make it african make it you know but at least you know it, it has to be it's not like <laughs> well that was that, that was that was the concept that was a concert party day that was used to be in people's houses you know yeah, but you know what though they still had it that there was a little stage there each time yeah 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 so i mean I it was it was you know with my dad because i was quite you know i was maybe i must be about eight well i mean <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah they they always had a stage or they had some elevated you know space to be on and for the audience mm -hmm. to be on the other side so that yeah. was always there. and they had this special curtain thing where they put but and then behind they have their costumes and they get, you know, they change yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I mean, that's, 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 that's amazing. I mean, space, a few no, people I've spoken to. This. I mean, sorry, I, I don't mean to, I mean to cut you. Um, yeah. Carry on, carry on, Kwame, carry on. Like, carry on. No, those worry. days, the concert band yeah. days, they used to play, they would play in Kaneshi, Pram Pram, yes. Circle, Orion, um, Nima Gaskia or somewhere oh. they, they, they will play in every single <laughs> you know <laughs> every single part area of Accra yeah. they'll play in La Paz and they'll play it at Hong Kong they can play at Kwashima so they'll play three shows in this little tiny area and they will get people every night yes that's why yes. there were that many concert bands around because they made money out of it yeah at that yeah. time do you yeah. get what I mean but yeah there are no venues so no there's yeah play? lack lack of lack of venues i totally agree i totally agree yeah, with I'm you on that, that as well playing someone's beer bar and they don't think about live music they think about how much space to get for people to sit and 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you bring in a stage would mean that less people to sit, less chairs. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's not good for business. Anyway, no. that's that's amazing. So, I mean, I know, I know you're an amazing multi instrumentalist. I was actually look, listening to this gentleman today. Yo, that's. I mean, father. the hair, the hair is better than yours. You know, to be honest, <laughs> oh, man. I Much just, better than I yours. I just want to be like him, man. I just want to be like right. him. Oh, man. I'll get there. I'll get there. One day. One day. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, your dad was an amazing guitarist. I mean, KK number yeah. two, one of yeah. the seminal high life bands in the 70s. I mean, you as a multi instrumentalist, I know you play keys. So, keys and guitar, which one would you lean towards? Um, I call myself a keyboard player. Yes, uh, because I actually I kind of stopped playing guitar when I was about fourteen or fifteen. Yeah, or between thirteen and fourteen to play keyboards because mm. I wanted to play. I wanted to have that big keyboard sound. And from yeah. that time, I didn't touch guitar till I joined the Craig David Band in two thousand two thousand one. Yeah, I joined. I joined them. Yeah. Um, yeah, and um, that's when I, I played guitar. I started playing the, the guitar again. I mean, I recorded in the studio in, in all the back. I, I haven't, I don't practice guitar as much as I practice keys. So I okay. call myself a keyboard player. A keys, but a key. I happen to be one of the few people that can play certain styles. So um, uh, I actually get. <laughs> that was that was enough. That was the next topic I was going to come up to, yeah. as in high life music in its general, uh, in general, and maybe. You set different styles, but at this point in time, I'll put everything together. I mean, the future of high life, so far as the young ones are concerned, I know you are sort of a father figure. I mean, the amount of people that have passed through that room that you're sat in, who are <laughs> yeah. now seriously, who are now playing, who are now playing on world, who are now playing on world stages. I mean, yeah. Santrophy, probably yeah. half of Santrophy went through where you're sat majority I mean, of them <laughs> dominic emmanuel yeah, I mean, everybody everybody <laughs> went through you i mean and these guys are relatively young so yeah. from once again from your perspective as someone who's more or less a mentor what is the future what, what can you see what is the future for high life so far as these people that have come through your camp these slightly younger musicians who are also trying to make make yeah make a mark i mean what is the future like for them you know the one thing i'll say is we need more bands like sun trophy yes we need to have more bands we need to have more bands that's the only time we can truly start talking about the music and the genre and what we can do with it you can't have yeah. three bands. You can't have Kuchibura and San Trophy and that's it, it's done. That's no, you can't no. have four bands. You can't have Chichiku and this. It's four of us. It's not, it's, it's, it's not enough. It's not a hundred of us. It's not, do you know what I mean? And all doing really well. We just yeah. need to find a different spill of, of whatever we're doing as far as high life goes. And we don't all end up sounding the same because we're playing similar music. In the yeah. 70s and the, and the 80s, those guys, they had sound. They had their own yeah. sound. Each single band had their sound. If you heard K from Pons, K from Pons. If you heard Visa Visa Visa. If you had, you know, even though Visa Visa back K from Pons as well for some of the tracks that he did. When you hear K from Pons one, you can hear a bit of a, you know, I mean, difference with it. There's a distinct difference, you know, yeah. Played the same songs, the same clave, but you had everyone sounding different. Yes. That's what we need. We need more bands. And we need people having um, something that's special about what they do, the high life they bring. We wanted to bring our version of high life that is special and different. Then we can start talking. You can start yes. hearing variety of high life. You don't hear the same high life. If, imagine we play the same thing. <laughs> Such a place, <laughs> the same thing. The other band plays the same thing. The audience gets yeah. to hear, they just hear the same thing. They get yeah, bored. you're right. We need yes. to bring out different things. And um, with that, we can create the market at the same time because that market kind of died from the 80s and people mm. love it. But we end up sending high life more abroad than we end up being able to keep giving it to people that are in Ghana, even though they love it whenever they hear it here. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, we're not yeah. marketing I mean, it as much. We're marketing it yeah. out, out there. You know, I mean, I know that's, that's all, all because of all because of the, the whole. Sorry, I don't, I don't mean to cut you. 
No, that's fine. Carry on. <laughs> it's, just all, uh, it's just all from labels and distribution companies and all that, and the system that Ghana runs and people having particular artists that are being pushed in front of the queue than allowing every genre to have its representation in the industry or in the market of music and not just having one soul, just dance hall and Afrobeats and <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> oh, you, know, you need to have some folklore, there's some, yeah. this, that, some other thing. Yeah, they all, we, we, need, we need a variety. We need it. A, a fair balance. Yeah. A That's fair balance. I mean, to to reiterate on what you've said, I mean, I'm a DJ, I'm a record collector. I've been around sort of when they called it world music today, it's yes. not world music. I mean, for I've been around from when they called and to me well, in Ghana now, so far as music is concerned, yeah. there is a distinct sort of divide. I would say the kind of music you guys play, the kind of music Sun Trophy plays, the kind of music Kichaku plays, I see that as music for export. Because yeah. no one, no one actually um, um, partakes in that sort of sound. And then the other side, which is more the, the pop, the contemporary, the sort of dance hall that you said, that is mainly for, for, for home consumption. I mean, that is how I see it conceptually, yeah. you know? So that's how, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's no, how it's become. That, that's how it's, it's be I mean, we should be able to spread the love everywhere so we have the music everywhere equally. In yes. the 70s, the music was being made for the people here and people yeah. out there heard it and loved it. It wasn't yes. being made, you know, just to go and <laughs> do festivals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you get what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Um, Kwame, that... Kwame, could you stop for a minute? I think you're missing, but you're going to come back. Here we go. Hold on. No, no. We are going to bring you back at stream. Okay. Kwame, can you, you see us? I, I am here. Can you see me? Hey, yeah. you're back. Thank God for that. There was, there was no way I was going to rewind this session. No, <laughs> we in. We in. <laughs> there was no way I was going to rewind. Ah, great. You're we, back. Okay. We in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're almost coming to the end of this sort of little chat that we were having to you um, to 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 sort of have with you for HMD. Um, I would like to know. I mean, I think sometime before Christmas, the government passed legislation to do with um, some sort of funding. Sorry, I don't have the I don't have all the details. My other um, um, colleague has got all the details, but it's to do with um, the government providing money to musicians, but at the same time, we'll try and levy you guys as well. I mean, have you heard anything? Can you tell me more? To be honest, I haven't heard about this and that's really because I've kind of shut my whole system <laughs> to a lot of news that's coming in because with the whole COVID thing going on, there was so much information coming that just got me depressed every day. So okay. I just made sure I filtered every information that came to me. I heard some stuff about the government helping or doing something for musicians, but I heard they wanted to build a studio. Um, okay. Obviously, they should tax musicians. We should pay tax. We should, you know, it should be done properly. We should be yeah. recognized as an entity that brings X amount of money to the government, and we should pay tax, and we should be taxed, and we should get social security and benefits and all that stuff. That's what should happen. So yeah. if the government is going to put in money, and you know take you know a percentage out of it i think it makes sense but i'm not sh very sure what the main um um situation or the main story is with that so, um, um i would like to get some enlightenment before i can comment more about it okay great it's such a shame i haven't got the full the full bill here to yeah. not for us to go through but i mean it's it's quite important to mention that as well so finally finally <laughs> You know, you can always send it one, to me and I can do a video and you can insert it. I can do a video on my phone. That is a, yes. That's a brilliant idea. <laughs> that's an absolutely brilliant idea. Um, I think I think our internet is cutting, but we are not going to cut. We've almost come to the end and we Good. can't let we we can't let technology ruin something this interesting. There you go. 
good. So finally, um, when do we get an album from you personally? Oh, is that one of the questions you've got? Yeah, that's my last question. When when can really? we expect your album? Okay, why didn't you ask this question first? <laughs> well, I decided to leave it for last because I thought that would be a well, that, that would be a nice way to say bye bye to a guest. Yeah. They're gonna expect Actually, an album right. from Tommy as well. To be honest, I was gonna release my album in 2020, at the end yeah. of 2020, because we had Kwashiba album. I recorded my album in 2018, but we mm -hmm. had Kwashiba album release in 2019, so I couldn't have my album release. Yeah. Um, I was meant to then finish the festivals from last year, and then yeah. um, finish festivals last year, and then release my album towards the end of the year, and then do the yeah. promo tour and all that around um, from March <laughs> up until August. Yeah. And um, that's what happened. But I don't want to release my album and not be able to do the right promotion for it and do the right thing and just have some of virtual course. thing here. And no, there. no, 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 no. That's no, no, just no. my thing right now. Um, I have a few conceptual shows that are coming out that will be coming out from my home and um, all that stuff. Yeah, and the YouTube Good. stuff and all that. I've been doing some master classes and also um, I have some educational program that's also being rolled out, rolled out. So um, there's a few things going on. And once we're able to go outside again, you hear the album. Excellent. I mean, look, I don't know what to say. It's been such a pleasure to have you. And I'd really like to apologize for 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 the 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 break in the internet. But yeah, at least we could hear you and we could we could actually see you and we can see you now. So yes, thank you very, very much, Kwame. And we will be speaking to you sometime soon. Take care. Thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Nice one. Thank Please. you. Another insightful um, conversation there focused a lot on the industry structures and lack of support. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I yeah. wanted to say, I wanted to say, I mean, as a DJ, you mentioned this, and also as a digger, I believe that, you know, popular high life music, live music, it's been sustained because of the stuff that you're doing. You know, you're not you in particular, but you're reissuing, you're playing the music and keeping it alive. Yes. I mean, could you talk a bit more about, you know, that kind yes. of? Yeah, yeah. So I think the industry structures for these new um, young artists that are still pursuing the art of playing live is is hundred percent or near enough let's say ninety eight percent um <clears throat> foreign owned so you've got um lots of um labels from Europe having a big stake or having in huge investments in these um in these young up and coming artists who are playing live. You've got labels like Philophone um who was actually set up shop in Kumasi now, just just recording the way they used to record in the seventies, and you've got um, musicians like Alogo Te Oho, um, Florence Aduni, The Sounds of Joy. All of them are signed to his Philophone label, and that is providing great great support and great exposure. You've got like Strat, um, the home of Ebo Taylor and um, um, Pat, Pat Thomas. Pat Thomas, you know. So um, <clears throat> you've got agencies like Eden who actually support the scene um, a lot as well because they are notable um, agents and booking agents. Um, so I'd say it's, it's all 100% or near enough 100% foreign owned, but the output is, is quite raw and organic and quite soulful. Mm. No, that, that is true. Um, I mean, in terms of the future, and all of them have mentioned this at different points, it's about being able to sustain that. Um, yes. And I know that there are a number of musicians out there that I'm sure you would say we should all be listening to, supporting, buying their records. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if we want to keep the scene alive, especially in Ghana, I think the best thing to do would be to support these musicians. Obviously now, you can't play live, but you can stream. You can stream their music, you can buy online. So I would strongly suggest you do so to keep the music scene alive. Um, 
Yes, new music. There's loads of new Ghanaian music around, just that they don't get the airplay that the main contemporary artists get. Um, so you've got bands like A Lost Men signed to Strat. Um, that's also a Kologo player from the North. Amazing album. Um, <clears throat> um, you've got Philophone with Florence Aduni, latest album coming out, I think, in March or something like that. Um, you have um, Central Feast label as well as Earth. Is it Earthworks? Not Earthworks. I, I forgot. But Central Feast label um, out here, out here, or out yeah. there. One of those two. And I think it's <laughs> out, out there. Out there. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one of those two. <laughs> uh, they're signed to Central Feast as well, and um, they are actually doing a lot to get to, um, um, the guys more recognised. So I believe we should support the community. We should go and see their live gigs once. Um, um, this thing is over. Um, we should stream the music, and moreover, we should make noise about them. Very, very important. Absolutely, and that's something that we at Acadia are, you know, passionate about, and we encourage people, especially in the diaspora, who want to connect with their roots, to be doing that. You know, I think you mentioned with uh, Kwame about um, the Creative Arts Bill and where that had got to. Um, and as much as we've had lots of these things raised by government before, I feel like this is our time to hold them to account. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, if, I mean, if they're saying that they're gonna do it, we make sure it. that, yeah, we make sure that they account for why it still hasn't happened, you know? Exactly. So I yeah. think that is an avenue as well that, I mean, music business, as I said, we need a three, bump session to talk about that but i think yeah. it's been a brilliant five series we've got like 10 hours of good material and and counting so yes it's been really it's been really amazing to have you guys on for the past um and um, five episodes all i'd say yeah. is just keep loving live music keep loving good music absolutely and yeah. thank you for all your support everyone who's you know stuck with us um, thank you very much for Patrick, who has been behind the scenes, uh -huh. um, making sure that everything flows. I don't yes. know if you can see him. Also, uh, yes. he's right. He's 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 yes. <laughs> okay, and also to Rhoda, who is in Accra, live tweeting as we speak. To mm -hmm. all the people who've supported us, asked us questions, commented. Please don't stop, keep talking, keep supporting us and all the um, musicians that you're now hearing about if it's your first time. And most of all, I'd like to say thank you to the experts, Bernard. I don't know how you've kept all that knowledge in your head, you know, well, since September. <laughs> but it's you. amazing, thank amazing. You. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. thank you so much as well for having me. So yes, um, we're gonna sign off with a performance from Che Che Ku. I mean, yeah. So this was um, a clip that he recorded at Alliance Francais in Ghana, and it's with his full-blown um, um, Super Opong Stars. It was it was known at Ghana Log High Life then, but it's now Super Opong Stars, and they call this Kukumi. Thank you very much, everybody, and thank you for watching. Thank you.